afternoon. Wow. I've only got a couple minutes with you here uh, today, so I just want to tell you a little bit about my journey, what's happened over the last, man, I think about it, on October 3rd, 1998. I'm going to age myself here a little bit. October 3rd, 1998, a gentleman by the name of Monty Holm walked into an office in Calgary, Alberta. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Canadians! Woo! And drew us a little picture. We were three of us were in an office of a business we were already running, trying to break into different things. And that man drew a picture, and the world changed forever. And I think about our three, uh, our three show up, step up, dream up that we've got going on. And I think back to those days, and even the days before that, I've been showing up and stepping up almost since I was born. How many people have been showing up and stepping up since they were born? Most of us. We had an unfortunate situation happen way back in the 80s. I'm from a family of six kids, the oldest of six kids. I'm from a town of 235 people. Who can relate to that? Farming town in uh, southern Alberta, where my grandfather came from Italy, stuck sticks in the grounds with two of his brothers, and we started farming and ranching in 1903. And in 1980, we had an estate succession challenge when my dad was just walking across the yard one day, 46 years old, and the next day he wasn't there. And we had no plan. No plan. They were great businessmen, but as for planners, in case something happened to one of them, there was no plan at all. And I watched my mom deal with the government for about four years after that and almost broke a fourth, fifth generation family business. And I was mad. Would that make anybody else mad? I was blaming everybody. I was blaming the establishment. The only one I decided I shouldn't be blaming is myself, right? It wasn't my fault. So off to the big city I go. I'd never been to a city. I was in my middle 20s. I come from this little town of 325 people. And I go to this big city. And I go there with a dream. If it's one thing I've been able to do since I was a kid, I remember I've been able to dream up. I've been able to dream further ahead of where I've always been. It's my number one strength, is I just live in a dreamland, right? My mom used to always say to me, you're such a dreamer. I remember her saying that all the time, Tom, all the time. You're such a dreamer. And at school, they used to say, get your head out of the clouds, kid. What's out that window? There's nothing out that window. I go, everything's out that window. And I didn't do very well in school, but I got through it because I knew there was a big world in what I was looking for. So here I go, move to this big city of Calgary. Nobody I knew had ever been to a city, and I go there with a dream, and I'm going to build something, and I'm going to get something going alongside of the farming and ranching, and it's going to be incredible, and I couldn't find it. And I was there like five years, searching, 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 right? And then October happened just because God bless Money Home for being just a magician, a master at the fundamentals of the business, and we were found about five lists deep on this list. And good thing you had all of them with me. And they walked into that office in October 3rd, 1998, drew a picture, and the world changed forever, and the dreaming started. And I wish I could spend about an hour with you or two hours and just tell you what the last 24 and a half years have looked like from the day we started in Canada when we didn't even have a contract with any company. And nobody believed this. And the industry said, no, you're not coming in here. You're not going to disrupt. You're not going to educate families. And they talked about us and wrote stuff about us and said things about us. And the more they said that we couldn't do it, we said what? Yeah. Yes, we can. You just keep telling us that we can't do it, and we're going to go harder. And when it was full time up in Canada, I remember those early days when you could not have a job. Now we could attract people from everywhere. They can all start part-time, stick their toe in there. And Canada wasn't like that in the beginning. You had to get in here full-time and go at it, man. And you had to do it good until you, you did it bad until you did it good. And we all got good at sales in the first couple of years. We sold our cars. We sold our houses. We sold everything we had. <laughs> but I could see it, Paxton. I could see it. And every time they said it couldn't be done, we said it will be done. And every time they said, those people don't want to know about money, you call me that one more time, those people, because I am one of those people, we knew we could do it. It was unbelievable. And the dream started. And I realized over the last 25 years, especially being in this business and with this great company, because everything's happened for my family in this generation and in the next generations that are coming, and especially the payback I'm doing for the three and four generations 
before me that paid all the prices, this company's been delivering that. This company's been delivering that. And it's the system that does it. How do you take a farm boy? Yes, Johnny, here it comes, buddy, just for you. How do you take a farm boy off the back of a horse and out of the cab of a tractor and put him in the people business in a big city where I'd never been before? There has to be a system. See, Dave Limpert, you can write this down, Dave Limpert is a product of the system. And everybody says, well, what part of this system? I became a master at one part of the system more than the rest of it. That was the event flow part of the system. I understood right away just moving people from event to event to event was how you got it done. Starting, of course, with the daily event of just my own activity. And I was always just dreaming what it was going to look like. I've been able to dream up all my life since I was a kid. I get to this company and there's a system that allows me to dream up and the dream to come true. There's three things you need when you're dreaming. We're always talking about, hey, you got to sell people the dream. You got to sell the people the dream. Point number one, who's the first person you got to sell the dream to? <laughs> yourself. Of course, yourself. Exactly right. You got to sell yourself the dream. And that dream's got to be precise and clear, a clear mental picture of what your life is going to look like and what that dream looks like. So what part make up, what parts make up that dream? It's all our whys. It's all of our whys. Written down and known and revisited all the time. That's how you sell yourself the dream. And sometimes you can't even tell your spouse and other family members how crazy that dream is because they're going to look at you like you're crazy. Right? That's how big your dream has got to be. So number one, you got to sell yourself the dream. Two, you got to know your dream. You got to know your dream. Again, that's your whys that come in there constantly that help you know your dream. Number three under that point is you got to think about it 100% of the time. My buddy Brad Jacobs calls it a healthy obsession. I was always worried about myself. I thought I'm probably not healthy in the mind because I can't shut it off. You got to dream the dream 100% of the time, all day, every day. Every second where I'm going and where I'm heading is in the forefront of my mind. I'm always selling myself the dream. I know my dream. I think about it 100% of the time, but I'll leave you with this. The number one thing you got to do when you're selling yourself the dream is you got to hang with other dreamers. You got to hang with other dreamers. And WFG is a company of dreamers, doers, and dreamers that do. Thank you very much.